Hello people, this is uh, question time from Portsmouth on the 26th of October 2017. Um, I will get on with the questions now, uh, so let's get going. From Lisa Wheeler tonight, please, Lisa. Um, following Jared O'Mara's rightful suspension by the Labour Party, is a public figure allowed a pass? Is a pub Uh, yeah, this question, um, I suppose a lot of it depends on what what the individual has done. It's just, that's a very awkward question to ask, and, 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 and I don't think David didn't, David didn't like the fact that the questioner actually made it clear she wasn't digging at the Labour Party, she was just saying in a general term. Uh, because I'm, I'm sure there's plenty of parties that's got individuals that has done probably some nasty things when they were younger. So this goes a, this goes to the heart of our democracy and who do we want representing us? Um, do we want strong individuals that hasn't got no empathy whatsoever, doesn't care? Um, that's the question really. And is does does a vetting process actually help with that or not? Um, you know, I'm not too sure to be honest, but you know, at the end of the day, I suppose what is the cough? Do, do we go five years, ten years? <laughs> you know, where is the cut off when we say has a past? What what's what's the cut off? You know, is it last year? Is it two years ago? Is it, it all these things are real complex things that that people really don't get into because they're too complex. So, oh let's just let's just let's just go around the outside and just stumble it all together. I mean, you know I think there's got to be serious questions, especially more so if someone's got a criminal record due to financial gain or fraud or something like that. Yeah, that that's where I would draw the line. Um, I feel that somebody should be at the head of government, controlling the rest, controlling a minister, a budget, which they're in charge of, and they've got corrections of whatever it is in the financial system or whatever. You know, I would say that's the red line. But we always goes on about oh somebody having a view about one particular person because they're coloured and they said something nasty about them and all this kind of English language it's just stupid in my view um, you know somebody can have a view on a person that they may not like and you know if they start calling them names that's just childish isn't it really um, but I, at the end of the day I, I think it's a way complex question and should public figures have a right to have a past that's very open to the individual and the case the case in question isn't it really if he's constantly going around groping women some women may like it and may may encourage him but then there's going to be some women that find it very uncomfortable but feels unable to say anything because of their power, you know, or her power. Who's ever in a position of power, and, and, and like it or not, a public figure is in a position of power. Um, and, you know, it's a very complex question, in my view. Uh, obviously, we all come with a past, don't we? So there's no getting away from that. But I just feel if it's a criminal conviction, that should be properly investigated by all parties because it's just wrong and you know let's say uh, well look at the last Prime Minister <laughs> Dave Cameron you know he was he's been actively he's even though he's not against the law but he's got an active fund over in one of the tax havens now yeah that isn't a criminal of, of, that is not a criminal aspect but the fact of the matter is, he's been avoiding paying tax. And when you ask what is tax for, tax pays for public services. It pays to save lives. 
you know, and to protect people. And when the wealthy don't want to pay that tax because they're paying it themselves, you know, it is public figure, isn't it? You know, I just, it's a very complex question, and, and if we like it or not, should should the voters be told about it? That's that's the key question here. And 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 if an individual that wants to get into the public area, they should be honest with the public, with the voters. But they won't be because they know the chance of them getting elected would be zero. So there's that complex lying going on too, isn't there? So. Yeah, I'll leave that question there and I'll move on to question number three. Zahid Khan, please. Zahid Khan. As Raqqa is recaptured and freed from ISIS, people who travel from UK to fight for ISIS will be looking to return. Should... Right, so this is should they return, basically. Uh, the problem you've got is like like a lot of them said on the panel, you know, we can automatically say to someone coming back from that area, oh, you're going to go and blow yourself up, so we're not letting you back in, go back. Well, where will they go back to? <laughs> and the other problem you've got to remember is, is, is some people left to go and fight against ISIS. So... You know, I don't know. I've, I've not seen it. I've not seen it in the news that people on a plane go into that area saying that they're going to go and join ISIS. You know, I haven't seen any of that in the news. So I don't know where this rhetoric comes from that these people that believes in that religious rhetoric of extremism has openly created massive videos and it's been spread around everywhere saying, oh yeah, I'm going to, you know. They didn't do that, you know, it's all done quietly. And there is a percentage of both, isn't there, really? There's some that went over to stop ISIS, then there's others that went over to join them. And in in theory, if you've gone over there to join them, you're so you you're so warped in your thinking why would you want it? I, I suppose I suppose it would be manipulated to say, look, you know, you come back, you lie, and you get into the country, and then at one time, at one particular time, we'll call on you to act. And and that is a real danger. There's no getting away from that, is there? That is a real danger. Um, I think that also the valid, a very valid point was made about locking these people up, and then what they do is they highlight the people that they think they can they could convince to do these acts and 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 in a way locking them up is a complex issue because they're very clever people and they will manipulate vulnerable people in jails and then when they get out they will become the danger so you know i don't think i think is i think the West needs to get on top of this rhetoric that they, they're talking about. You know, we need to be attacking that rather than dropping bombs. Because that's not working. It has never worked in the, in the Middle East. And it's just a joke. Um, but how how can you get around someone lying? Because they would have... ISIS, if, they, if, if, if a group of British Muslims or any group within the British, within the UK went over there, there's a high probability that they would have seen some high commandos in ISIS and they would have been trained, they would have been taught what, you know, you know, they would have wanted all the information from them that they would have got willingly and they can come back knowing what they're going to get. They're going to get interrogated and they're going to be questioned over and over again. Did, did you do anything over there? And they're just going to lie. It's as simple as that. They probably just make up a lie that they went over there to stop ISIS, and 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 if they're very good lawyers, how can you get around that? You know, and like people say, we can't turn around to people and kick them out of the country, especially if they are a, if they were born here. Um, how are we any different to these extremists? If we start kicking these people out, how are we any different to what ISIS would do? You know, it's risky, yeah. But 
I just feel that we've got to be responsible in that and and we need to fund our prison services properly so they could clamp down on these groups that's manipulating vulnerable people because there's a lot of mentally unstable people in jails today and it's just going unchecked you know and, and there's those that it's those people that will be manipulated and brainwashed into believing their religious rhetoric and they will become the bigger danger um, I still think that if we could get proof that they have done something like murder people then I think they should be locked up but I think we need a whole a whole stranger thing a whole range of things sorry it's such a complex issue like everything is when it, when it comes to comes to trying to stop it's not it wouldn't take much it wouldn't take many therapists to break down these people's beliefs because we're wholly human at, at the fundamental level we love our loved ones and and you know it's that that you've got to try and imprint and it's not normal to want to blow yourself up or hurt others really but you know that's the way I feel anyway um, I'll move on to question number three now Sheena Brown should Mark Carney and the BBC admit Brexit will happen and get behind Britain instead of deprecating our nation and continually weakening our bargaining stance. Yeah. Wow. <clears throat> the only one that's weakening this whole thing is a joke. The UK agreed to the terms and conditions of the EU. You know, the whole range of everything. And that included this Article 50. And basically, it's quite simple how it works. If a country wants to leave, they can invoke that Article 50. But when they do, essentially, they give all the power to the EU. That's what the UK signed up to. We, we agreed to those terms and conditions when we signed up. The one key thing that wasn't in there was the fact that the UK did not have to activate Article 50. And, and what I find really bad is the Tory party activated Article 50, then a few months later actually had a general election. And I... I ugh, it really confuses me. It's chaos. And, you know, as for Mark Carney, the Bank of England, he was being asked simple questions based on what his job is and he was giving them and the likes of Jacob didn't like the answers he was giving to those questions and he's trying to make it oh well that was well yeah but he's being asked questions about forecasts and forecasts are done on evidence based evidence based and obviously projected based systems so he was saying what he thought and let's face it, on the day of the election, it wasn't Dave Cameron that came out and stabilised anything. If anything, the Tory party went into a infighting chaos. And it was Mark Carney that come out and actually said, look, you know, we are there. The Bank of England is going to pump as much liquidity. And let's, let me clarify what liquidity means. It means pumping free money into our banking system. That's, that's the layman's terms for it. Obviously, they don't say that because if people suddenly find out that banks are getting billions of pounds from the Bank of England and our government, I don't think many people would like that. So they've got to make it more complex and, and put a lot of complexity to it to muddle it up so people don't want to bother. But the layman's terms for it is the Bank of England come out, he said, oh, we'll be fine. The bank, all our banks are, are basically, basically, uh, basically owned by our government. Basically, you know, they, 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 they were in public. Without saying it, they were in public hands. Basically, and yeah, that's what the Bank of England is today. The Bank of England is that middle ground between the 
the government owning it and running it, but yet making it seem like, oh no, no, they're still privatised. Um, it's chaos. Brexit is going to be chaos. And and like I said, Mark Carney was just answering the questions. And whenever he answered the questions that some Brexiteers did not like, and they felt it was it was being negative towards Brexit, then they would jump on it and attack him for it. He was doing his job. He was ha he was asking questions based on what was, and he was giving answers based on what they were. You know, yeah, the general election. He's never asked. You know. He, he, he's not asked for, by a political party to give a, an opinion on that because that would be different, wouldn't it? This was the country asking the questions to our bank of by our, the governor of Bank of England. Um, it's just and, and as for putting the, the country down, it's, it's the Tory party that's in chaos and they don't know. There was no. The reason there was no plans for Brexit was because Dave Cameron was limited to what he could use the civil, the government resources for. So the Brexiteers made sure that there couldn't be any actual in-depth things done to prepare for a outbreak. So all of it is the Tories. It was a Tory chaos infighting. Brexit was for the Tory. Brexit was set up by the Tory party for the Tory party. It wasn't set up for the country. Uh, that's for sure. And and they managed to convince a, a lot of people that Brexit is the cause of all the problems. And if we leave it, we'll be better off. It's delusional. And I will leave that there because I just we we you know questions every week on this about Brexit and all that in it so I'll uh, move on to question number four is Alice Moore who should be held accountable for low and decreasing numbers of poor and non-white students at Oxford and Cambridge who should be held responsible is Alice Moore Yes, uh, an, I'm going to say again, another complex question. Um, maybe students go there to have a look around, and maybe when they start talking to other groups, like like everyone said on the panel, you know, they start to realise, well, hold on a minute, they're completely different to me, and I don't know if I fit in. And if you if you I suppose it could have quite a lot of damage if you can't find a group that, that becomes a friend and and you know you can get you can you can help and and communicate with and and, 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 and stuff like that and if, if you go to one of these big universities and you're on your own all the time it doesn't matter how smart you are it's going to affect you because you're still a human being you know you, you still want friends and if, if you're if you live in way miles and miles away and you just go to this new place, you don't know a new one, it's going to be complex and, and I think that will have an effect on learning and, and, and all the courses that, that, that they're given and, and yeah, who's responsible for it? Private schools I suppose, cancel private schools and just have one schooling system. Um, that would be fair, uh, as one of the audience members said. You, you know, it's totally uneven. If you've got a class of like thirty odd children in the public schooling system, and then you've got private schools that's only got ten children, you know, it's massively, it's like over double. So a teacher who's only teaching ten children can spend the time on the children that needs that extra help. And, and that's a dream thing in the public sector schooling area. You know, it, that would never happen because it can't. Because we've got weak politicians who's too scared to come out and put tax up to pay for what we want as a country. Because obviously, as soon as people's got to start paying more money, they'll turn on them and they'll vote for another party because 
people say people say stuff, but they don't really mean it. You know, especially when it comes to paying more money. Um, you know, I'm not saying all people like that. There would be a majority that would be happy to pay that more, but those are the people that generally may have to just have two holidays instead of the normal three or four holidays. Um, you know, the vast majority of people in this country are struggling like never before. And a tax rise would be very difficult for them to continue doing the job for pennies, you know. So, but yeah, um, I'll uh, I'll move on to the next one, well, to the last question now. Last question from you. Should congestion charging be introduced in all cities to improve air quality? Should well, London is now. Well, congestion charges, let's call it what it is, is money grabbing, isn't it? But that's all it is, people. Um, taking money from people ain't going to do nothing for the air quality, is it? Let's be honest. Uh, this is just this is just government trying to find every little bit of way, or local councils trying to raise bit a bit more money up to pay for services that that they don't want to cut and, and I suppose you could call it kind of like a, a stealth tax in it, I suppose in a way um, should it happen um, I don't think it would be a bad thing to be honest all, all in town centers just stop all you know only the only like the bare minimum could actually go into ta like delivery driving and things like that and then those routes should be governed one way and the truck could only go that way you know uh, but all public and all other uses of transport should be banned completely from times um, you know what's wrong with taking a bike you, you imagine if you say like zone one, zone, zone one and two uh, completely banned of traffic no traffic whatsoever apart from buses and public transport and uh, uh, delivery drivers that's it everything else would be banned uh, I think that would be the better way to go but obviously that wouldn't that would cost money to implement and that's not the key to these charges you know, the, the the whole point of this system is to make money and it's going to make money because you've got a lot of wealthy people that's going to pay that charge. Uh, so, yeah, I'll, I'll leave it there, people. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, if you've watched all the way through, thank you very much. <laughs> um, like I've said before, you may not agree with what I'm saying, but most people that's probably made it to the end would probably kind of agree on issues. Maybe some issues I say no, but, you know, uh, until next Thursday, thank you and bye-bye.